Joining me now from the NFL Network is Steve Weissman. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Steph. Can't wait. Yeah, lots to get into, especially with that NFL MVP race. Lots of twists and turns at this point and heading into week 11. Surprise, surprise. It's looking like a quarterback. We'll, we'll take it this year. Josh Allen is the heavy favorite right now. He's got over 2,600 2, yards with 19 touchdowns, plus three on the ground and only six interceptions. But we always know Brady is in the mix. Of course, we got Dak Prescott, Matt Stafford. So who are you thinking will take it this time or who are your top candidates at this point in the season? Well, Steph, you named a couple of my guys, and, and you talk about quarterbacks. The last eight MVPs have been quarterbacks, right? And so 17 of the last 21 have been quarterbacks. So chances are it's going to be a quarterback, especially with the way things are playing out this year. That said, you got to put Tom Brady right up at the top. For me, he's the number one guy. Leads the NFL in both passing yards per game and passing touchdowns. And he's doing it at age 44, which is absolutely <laughs> insane. He only needs 130 yards and three passing touchdowns this week to get to 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns in his first 10 games. The last player to do that, Patrick Mahomes, guess what he did that year? He won the MVP. I also put Lamar Jackson up there. I think last week was an outlier for him, and I just kind of throw that performance out. Uh, the Ravens right now rank second in total offense. And get this, Jackson has accounted for nearly 83% of the Ravens offense. So they're ranked second. Mm. He's, he's accounting for 83% of that. Leads the Ravens in rushing 639 yards. He's top 10 in the NFL in passing yards per game and rushing yards per game. So he's 10th in yards passing per game. He's ninth in yards rushing per game. And that's mm. absolutely insane. Would be the second player in the Super Bowl era to rank top 10 in passing yards and rushing yards for a full season. Randall Cunningham was the only other guy to do that. That was back in 1990. And then I also put, like you said, Josh Allen in my top three. Uh, the Bills are the second-ranked scoring offense, and Josh Allen is averaging the second-most passing and rushing yards combined in the NFL this season. So he's right behind Lamar Jackson, one of five quarterbacks this year, averaging more than 300 passing and rushing yards combined and over 20 passing and rushing touchdowns, which is incredible what he's doing with this Bills offense. He's got a 100-plus passer rating in six of his last seven games played. And for me, what do these three guys have in common? They all lead teams that are in first place in their respective divisions. MVPs, in my opinion, are winners. Brady, Jackson, and Allen, they lead the way right now for me. Hmm. Being that good in the NFL is definitely hard to do. But in this business, it's pretty brutal. So there's always going to be criticism. Much of that does fall on the head coach. There's many franchises who will have to consider whether or not they want to stick with their current head coach or make a change at who's calling plays. As the season continues to play out, which coach do you think needs to panic about being on the hot seat? I, I don't love the hot seat term. Um, I'm going to start with this. So right now, there are 13 teams with either four or five wins this season. So that's the most through week 10 in NFL history. That's good for a lot of coaches. Also, every team in the NFL has multiple losses after week 10. So there's still a lot of opportunity. That said, um, halfway through a season when you haven't won a single game through week 10, I do think that's a problem. So uh, Dan Campbell signed a six-year contract. I think they give him more than a year. But 08-1 and one is not good. They rank 28th in offense. They rank 28th in defense. They could be, Steph, the first team to ever go 0-16-1 in a season. I don't think they will. Not a record you want. <laughs> so, you know, that, it's a, that's a tough spot to be in if you haven't won a game. For me as well, uh, the Jags right now at 2-7 and seven with Urban Meyer. It's not great. Um, yeah. He said they're not far off. He said there's a lot of positivity. So I like to hear that. The defense has been a bit better, but Urban is an offensive guy, and the offense is pretty bad. I mean, they're second worst in scoring, dead last on third down, second worst in turnover differential. That's not good. Plus, he had that incident earlier this year that was a distraction yeah. for the team. And in my opinion, in the NFL, your head coach just can't be a distraction. Yeah. Yeah, you got to win the locker room. 
you know, sometimes teams do hold on to their head coaches a little too long for things to turn around, but it's not common for an NFL coach to be fired after their first year. You mentioned Dan Campbell. He hasn't won a single game yet. And you also mentioned Urban Meyer managed two in Jacksonville. Also, Arthur Smith has a shot to get to 500 in Thursday night football tonight against the Patriots. But is there a chance that a first year head coach will be a one and done after this season? So, so Dan Campbell could be that guy. For me, Arthur Smith, I mean, the difference between five and five and four and six is pretty big. So this week's game against the Patriots is really important. Since 1990, 30% of teams that started five and five made the playoffs. He started four and six. So that's kind of massive. Uh, Kyle Pitts has lived up to the hype. A.J. Terrell doesn't get enough hype. And Matt Ryan, to me, is still clutch. Three fourth quarter comebacks this year has the highest grade from pro football focus since week four. Uh, last week's loss to Dallas was rough, but Smith took the blame. It was just one game. I think Arthur Smith is fine. Um, Nick Sirianni, another guy for the Eagles. The Eagles right now four and six, currently one game behind the five and five Panthers for that seventh and final playoff spot in the NFC. So still in the playoff hunt. I think he's doing all right. Uh, they actually beat the Panthers in week five. And get this, they have the third easiest remaining strength of schedule based on combined win percentage of remaining opponents. So if it happens, Nick Sirianni can become the third coach in Eagles history to make the playoffs in his very first season. That's still a, a big possibility there. They do need to find a way to win at home. They're 0-4 at home. Eagles fans are not going to like that. I lived in Philly for three and a half years. They love their Eagles. They're 0-4 this year. Four more games in Philly of their last seven. But since week eight, the Eagles actually lead the NFL 208.7 rushing yards per game. They're nearly 33 points per game since week eight, ranked second in the NFL. And Jalen Hurts, I like what he's doing out there. First quarterback since at least 1950 with 3,000 or more passing yards and 800 or more rushing yards in his first 14 career starts. So I think uh, Sirianni's doing all right in Philly. Yep. Well, you know, sometimes it's just not a fit. We saw that with Odell Beckham Jr. in Cleveland. You know, he wasn't happy there for some time, but from a football perspective, do you think he made the right decision in signing with the Rams? Or, you know, did he leave a lot of upside on the table for the Chiefs, Packers, Seahawks? There was a lot of teams vying for him at that point. Steph, I, I think it's a little too early to tell at this point. I mean, it's just one game. Initially, to me, this was a low-risk, high-reward move. However, since Robert Wood's injury, there's going to be a little bit more pressure put on Odell now. That said... The Rams are all in. OBJ was kind of like that cherry on top. They are Super Bowl or bust right now. Plus, he's always loved the West Coast. He said, when you wake up, it's nice, it's sunny, and it's hard not to be motivated to want to be great. So personally, as someone who lived in cold weather cities my entire life, before moving to LA, I can attest that it is truly life-changing. Mm -hmm. And a sunny sky translates to a sunny disposition and a happy and a motivated Odell Beckham Jr., it's going to be fun to watch. I like the decision. I don't think he left stuff on the table. We'll see what happens, but I like Odell Beckham Jr. as a Ram. Yeah, he'll get there. Give him some time. He just got to L.A. But this past draft had a lot of quarterbacks in the first round. We got to see them get some action in the NFL as a rookie. Lots of struggles, but Mac Jones is stepping up and making lots of improvements. Which quarterback do you see the most upside on? Steph, you said it. I mean, I, I got a lot of good things to say about Mac Jones. This guy has six wins this year, more than all other rookie quarterbacks combined. I mean, he's got a completion percentage of 69. That makes him the fifth rookie quarterback since the 1970 merger with six or more wins and a 65 or more completion percentage. Each of the previous four, Ben Roethlisberger, Robert Griffin III, Dak Prescott, and Justin Herbert, all went on to win Offensive Rookie of the Year in those seasons. He leads all rookies in passing yards, all rookies in passing touchdowns this season. According to Pro Football Focus, he joined Matt Ryan as the only rookie quarterbacks, get this, to earn a 90-plus grade in multiple games. But wait, there's more. Uh, Mac Jones had his best downfield performance of the season in Week 10 against Cleveland, so he's actually getting better. He had a perfect passer rating, 158.3, on passes of 10 or more yards. That's something that earlier in the season he wasn't doing as well with. He can become the third rookie quarterback to win each of his first five road starts in his career. The other guys, Dak Prescott, Ben Roethlisberger, it's pretty good company. And guess what? He's going to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. You know all about that. Last time he was there, 
He was with Alabama. Mm -hmm. He led them to the win over Florida for an SEC championship. I am very high on Mac Jones right now. Yeah, we did see a rise in his performance, but not every rookie quarterback is having the same success. First overall pick, Trevor Lawrence, only has two wins in Jacksonville. Justin Fields, we're seeing the mess of an offense in Chicago under Matt Nagy. It's a big jump to go from D1 to the NFL. But which quarterback is scaring you the most right now in the rookie class? So, Steph, at this point, I think everyone other than Matt Jones is struggling. But of the top two picks, you talk about Trevor Lawrence. I'm actually a little bit more, more worried about Zach Wilson right now. Um, I know he's injured, but before that, completing less than 58% of his passes. Four touchdowns, nine interceptions. That's not good. Passer rating under 64. Uh, he has been thrown into a tough situation with the Jets, but he's only averaging 6.5 yards per attempt. I do like his attitude. I think he's got this swagger that I appreciate. Uh, I like how he's really supported Mike White when Mike White was kind of thrown into the fray, his willingness to learn. Um, but there are some concerns right now. Trevor Lawrence as well, but, but Zach Wilson for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when we're looking at these quarterbacks, they've been playing longer than they ever have. At 39, Ben Roethlisberger has been the Steelers franchise quarterback the past 18 seasons. He has not made an, any retirement plans as of yet, but he has a bit of a decline in his performance that does indicate that the end is near for Big Ben. Should the Steelers go all in on a draft pick or should they go after a big name veteran? It's interesting. I don't know that they necessarily do either one, because if you take a look at their record with Ben Roethlisberger, the Steelers 17 and eight since 2019. Not bad. Uh, he's got a 688 win percentage over the last five seasons. That's the fifth highest among active starting quarterbacks over that span. And then you got a guy in Mason Rudolph, who I think can still be a starting quarterback in this league. He's five, four and one as a starter coming off a game where he had a career high in past attempts and completions for one and one at home in his career as a starter. And then you take a look at, at the history step in terms of trading multiple first round picks or a lot of picks to move up and get a quarterback. So this past year, the bears did it for Justin Fields. The Niners did it for Trey Lance. So TBD on both of those, but looking back, the jets did it for Sam Darnold, 2018, not worth it. Cardinals did it for Josh Rosen, 2018, not worth it. Bears did it for Mitchell Trubisky, 2017. Uh-uh. Rams did it for Jared Goff, 2016. That didn't work out. Uh. Washington did it for RG3 back in 2012. That didn't work. That was three first round picks. It goes picks. on and on. <laughs> I mean, the Jags did it for Blaine Gabbert, 2011, not worth it. I got more. The Eagles did it for Carson <laughs> Wentz, 2016. That didn't work out. There have been two uh. unicorns, in my opinion, Steph, and that, of course, the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, 2017, absolutely worth it. Guy's an MVP. Uh, and the Bills did it for Josh Allen uh, three years ago, and that worked out well. But mm -hmm. a lot more instances where it didn't work out. And I think you still have more with Big Ben and Mason Rudolph as well. Yeah, it's so hard to predict. But by this point in the season, we would have expected the Chiefs to claim the AFC West. But Mahomes, he has been having an uncharacteristic season. You know, we just talked about him being an MVP. But – it hasn't gone too great, but right now there's no team under 500 in the division. It's pretty close. None of them are even more than two games over that mark. So it will be intriguing how that final stretch plays out. But Kansas City did have a blowout win over the Raiders. I'm wondering if that makes them the favorite in the division again, or if there's anyone else still in the race. There, there's definitely other folks in the race. I'll say this. The good news, they've won three in a row, right? Uh, and you mentioned the big one. Uh, largest win for the Chiefs this season. Patrick Mahomes, season high, 406 yards. I mean, the Chiefs scored more points in week 10 than week 7 to 9 combined. And this was Mahomes' third career game, 400-plus passing yards, five-plus passing touchdowns. And get this, the previous two times he did that, he had four more passing touchdowns and a win the following game. So, bodes well for what's happening this week. The offense is clicking, and more importantly, Steph, the defense right now is in lockdown mode. I mean, they've only allowed 15.6 points a game in their last five games after allowing nearly 33 in the first five. They were two and three in those games, four and one in the last. Defense wins championships, plus Patrick Mahomes playing like an MVP again. I still like the Titans. I still like the Bills. I still like the Ravens. But right now, the Chiefs are right up there with everybody.
Yeah, it's looking pretty open, but it is nice to see them turn their season around. Very much appreciate you joining me and giving the dish on what's going on in the NFL right now. I can't thank you enough, and I hope to see you again. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, Steph. And where can everyone find your work? Uh, they can find me all over the place. Everywhere, uh, yeah. On NFL Network. They can find me uh, at Tennis Channel yep. the rest of this week. I'm hosting... Uh, TC Live during the ATP Finals. Next week, I'm back on NFL Network. You can always follow me on social media. Twitter is uh, at Steve underscore Weissman. Instagram is just at Steve Weissman, all one word. And uh, you never know where, where I'll pop up. Pop yep. up. I mean, heavy as well. So Yes, uh, yes, we'll have you on more. This is my debut here, and uh, it's been fun. So thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely give him a follow just so you can keep up with all of his work. He's making moves here. But thank you again. I really appreciate it. And we will be in touch. Sounds good.